Um, now we're going to continue with the theme of the circular economy. Uh, and next up is Elio Leonichetti. Now, Elio was one of the first senior business leaders to come on board and support One Young World. He's been a counselor at every One Young World since 2010. He actually got his cold play uh, back at the very start. Um, he's now the CEO of Igloo, uh, Bird's Eye Igloo, the world's largest frozen food company. Um, and Ellen was talking about you know, CEOs and business and circular economy and what they can do. And, and obviously, food waste is a huge issue uh, for the world. Uh, and that's the subject that Elio is going to come and talk to us about. So Elio, please come on. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. So good morning, One Young World. Is that a good morning? Yes? Well, it's a good morning for me because I'm going to speak about something which I feel very strong about. I, I'm going to speak to you about food, about forever. I'm going to speak to you about what you ate this morning and who left it on your plate. Like a mother or father, why did you leave it on your plate? And half of you grew up in countries that left food on the plates, and the other half grew up in countries that did not have the food on the plate. And when I grew up, my mother always told me, don't do that, because there is some other kid in some other country that doesn't have that food to eat. And the reason why that is the case is because waste in food is a major, meaningful issue. It's a global issue that you know, we're dealing with. And to talk about it, and to talk about it from a chief executive position of a food company, it gives me a great pleasure, because I can do something about it. And we have heard from Ellen that there are many millions of ways to help with the circular economy with waste. You can do it with rubber, you can do it with circuits, you can do it with carpets, you can do it in many different ways. Food is the way that we at Igloo Bird's Eye decided to help. So let me tell you about a couple of words about this company. This is uh, the largest frozen food company. We uh, are famous for our fish fingers. Uh, we're famous for our peas and veg and some other frozen. We sell about 2.5 billion fish fingers a year. You can go around the earth a couple of times if you line them up. You can take bath in our frozen uh, you know, peas if you fill you know, tubs and so on and so forth. But more importantly, we feed about 200 million meals in Europe. We are uh, particularly strong in Europe in 16 of the European countries. And we feed 200 million a month. 200 meals a million a month. So, as I was um, joining this company, I was thinking, um, this brand is amazing. For those of you that have been growing with, uh, you know, within the countries where Igloo, Bird's Eye, or in Italy, Findus, um, have been parts of, of you know, the, the nutritional landscape, you probably have seen this guy that is now green in his blue suit. It's the captain, Captain Bird's Eye, Captain Igloo, Captain Findus. And he was leading the way in terms of what's healthy and what's good for you to eat. And, and I was wondering, how strong is this brand? And how strong is this company? And how can we make that strength um, you know, turn into something that goes beyond the, the business uh, strength of things? And by the way, for all of those that are in business here, which, which are you know, the vast majority of you, uh, you need to be strong in order to do good. If your company is weak and you try to do good in order to strengthen your company, you're going to do both things bad. But if your company is strong, once the company is strong, then you can do good. You can, you can use that strength to expand the horizon um, of what you do. So I spent about the first year making sure the company was strong. And then I started to ask myself, what can we do to, uh, to make that strength you know, turning into an opportunity? And this is where the circular economy came into play. Looking at the circular economy, you see that there are four things. It's designed to manufacture. It's basically ensuring that through the retailer and through the consumption at home, whatever it is that you design to manufacture gets you know, a little waste less, gets used at the top. If it is not totally used, it can be reused or recycled, and then it gets back into you know, recycling, into designing again for manufacture. And all of this is about waste and is about resource utilization. And in uh, food, which is where we operate, um, there are a couple of incredible uh, numbers to keep in mind. One third 
of the world's food produced is wasted by one third of the population. So this is a massive amount, if you think about it. In certain cases, like in uh, veg or salad or fruit, two thirds of the food in developed countries, so-called developed, not certainly in the uh, science of, of utilization of resources, but in developed countries, two thirds of that gets wasted in fresh f uh, fruit and fresh vegetable. So this is a massive issue and, and is an issue that, you know, it, it hit to us that is actually because of a very important fact, which is that the life of the food, so the, the, the life of the duration of the food, um, is a not very well-known factor to the people that consume food. And so over 40% of this wastage happened, for example, in the UK, for example, in, in uh, veg, in vegetables, because people run out of the, the shelf life. So they find themselves in the fridge or whatever that the shelf life is gone, and they throw it away. So shelf life plays a massive amount of, of role, into, a massive role into, into this wastage. The other things that it occurred to me is that you guys, mostly, have a very limited familiarity with the concept of food waste. Um, one of my kids, I have four kids, one of my kids in, in uh, you know, a recent time, he was just looking at the fridge, open it up, you got a piece of meat that kind of looked a little dodgy. So he looked at me and said, is this good? And I said, I don't know, sniff it. And he was looking at me like, sniff for what? What am I sniffing for? I grew up that if you sniff a piece of meat, I know when it's rotten and I know when it's not. Now, because there is a shelf life date on it, there is not the familiarity with the concept of good or bad food. And so a lot gets wasted simply because you don't know what to sniff for. So, and I will stop it at that. I won't make no uh, further jokes. Um, so, <laughs> so there is 89 million tons in Europe alone that gets wasted every year. And if nothing gets done, it becomes 126 million by the year 2020. And the biggest contributor of this is the food waste in the households. Now, as you can imagine, there is food waste in the supply chain, there is food waste in the retailing environment, there is food waste in the households, and, and the combination of all this food is, waste is, is what you know, I talked about. But in the household, 42% of the total waste is what happens. I mean, I, I, I have this statistics, which is just in the UK, six meals a week, almost once a day, per household is wasted. Just in the UK, six meals a week for each household is wasted. And so I asked you know, myself and, and we as a, as, a, as a company asked ourselves, um, what can we do and how can we tackle this? And uh, last year at One Young World, um, a couple of, our, of the delegates, a couple of, of you guys were from, from Igloo and they came back and I'm, and I'm telling you, go back to your company and whatever you hear in these three, four days, you know, get, get a, you know, a, a moment with your chief exec or with whoever is responsible for making decisions in your company and download your thoughts. Let them know what you have learned in this environment because it makes a difference. These two guys came to me and said, at One Young World, we heard this and we thought that as a frozen company, we can do something together. And we had a program called Forever Foods that was focusing on responsibly sourced and prepared food. The main things that we did for years was um, ensuring that the food that get into our packaging were responsibly sourced and prepared. It's a very, very important thing. So you can imagine you don't want fish that has been fished in the wrong way. You don't want food that has been prepped, you know, prepared by you know, underage you know, kids in some part of the world. You want to ensure that all of this does not happen. It's a massive, important thing. Um, and we've been one of the founding members of the Marine Stewardship Council that today certifies, for example, 10% of all the fish that is, that is um, you know, sold uh, worldwide. But there was something more that we could do. And the idea of this forever food needed to become together. So we rebranded our corporate social responsibility, forever food together as a consequence of that conversation that I had with the two delegates that from One Young World came to my office, and at this point, they said, what about the fact that as a frozen company, we can prolong, because that's what we do, freezing, prolong the shelf life. And the freezing itself, it's a main 
uh, you know, part of what we do is our DNA. And so there is a study that, that we you know, funded a, a couple of years ago, which basically proved that 47%, so half, yeah, of the food wasted can be spared if in your routine, in your meal routine, you, free, you use the freezing. Either you buy frozen or you freeze. Doesn't matter, whichever of the two. If you use your freezer as part of your cooking, whether you grow it, whether you buy it, or whether you cook it, if you use freezing in the process, you can basically halve uh, the food waste. This is a massive, uh, massive amount, and importantly, something that we could do. And so um, we had like 47, if I remember correctly, projects that we were doing on corporate social responsibilities that were ranging from a number of things to, uh, to another. And we said, let's focus on the fewer things in which we can make a difference. So we, we used this concept to relaunch the Forever Food into Forever Food Together, which you see in the screen. Um, two days ago, I was in London. We launched this initiative with a, a policymaker, with a, you know, influencer, both at the UK government and at the European level. Journalists, media tried to make a little bit of awareness, and that's what I'm here to do today with you, making awareness of the fact that freezing and frozen has meaningful benefits in reducing food waste. We made our captain, who normally is blue and good looking, into this iconic green. We said the captain has gone green, and the captain has gone green because the strength of a company is now having a sustainability message. And the freezing and frozen have benefits that you guys should know. The 47%, you know, the, the prolongation. If you think about freezing is water and temperature. It's as natural as it gets. It doesn't consume any more than what you already have in the fridge, which you open 10 times a day, and instead of freezing, you don't. Um, and, and has main, meaningful benefit. We then have chosen two more um, uh, opportunities that we have, which I'm not going to talk about today because I want to keep it uh, very focused. The other two are healthier choices. We said 100% of our innovation will present healthier choices than what they replace because obesity and lots of this problem are big problems. But there are fantastic companies like Nestle, Unilever, and others that are bigger role in this uh, possible. So we pitch, we do our parts, but it's not where we can dent really make a difference. And then responsibly, responsibly sourced and prepared, which of course needs to continue because we need to do it. Uh, but this is not a positive thing, is a requirement. You cannot be a food company and be irresponsibly sourcing or preparing your food. So there is no kudos for doing that. We just have to do it. Otherwise, you know, we should get kicked um, in the butt. And, and so healthier choices and responsibly sourced and prepared continue, but benefits of freezing and frozen is really where you know, we can make a meaningful difference. So we made this captain go green and we asked, you know, what should he do other than looking into the future and telling us you know, what's the direction? And we had a number of call to action, um, which builds on what already is an established practice. One is, you probably know the five a day. Five a day is in most governments something that government recommend for nutritional diets and, and routines. Get vegetable. You know, again, I go back to my you know, mother and father role when you were kids. Get some vegetable, get some fruit. It's good for you. So what if we make one of them frozen? What if government would say, make one of your five a day frozen? Why? Because vegetable and fruit is what gets wasted the most. So if you freeze it, it doesn't get wasted. Simple, straightforward. What if we do that? What if you start doing it at home? What if you tell your friends to do it at home? Freeze it, it will last for longer, you don't waste it. The other thing is, very simply, you go to supermarkets, there is a bunch of buy one, get one free. Now, buy one, get one free, it's a waste in many different ways. It's a waste because you want one, but you end up with two, and you don't know what to do with the other one, but you got the impression that you got a 50% discount when you just get loaded by 10 or 20% that you didn't need. So, not good. And the other reason is that it creates a tremendous amount of price downward pressure that it gets pushed through the system down to the grower or the fisherman or whoever is at the bottom end of the chain that gets the short side of the stick and you know, is struggling to make their yields on whatever field you know, they're, they're working 
uh, you know, pay off because there is that downward pressure at the price level. So what if instead of cutting price, you're cutting waste, which is money. So there is the same benefit, but you just don't pay for it. And we go with buy one, freeze one. Buy one, get one frozen. Buy one, freeze one. So we made this call to action just a couple of days ago, and uh, we'll see. We hope that there will be retailers, there will be people that will be willing to work with us at it. The other one, very important one, we pledged that we will make our iconic products, which are fish fingers, peas, and spinach, 100% resource utilized. What does it mean? Our fish, for example, our fish fingers are made with fish fillet, but the fish frame, so the head, the bones, the tails, all of the things that we don't use, gets reused in the system, either in the fish oil or in the fish meal you know, type of uh, you know, industry, so that it doesn't you know, get wasted. And there are many companies that can select one or two products. You cannot do it with everything. But you select the one or two big products, large volume, and you learn how to go 100% resource utilization. You go back to the, to the growers, to the field, to the fishermen, you work with them and ensure that in the process there is no wastage and, and that gets um, you know, um, fully utilized. And then the, the, the last call to action was about learning. So I just told you that 40% of food waste, let me start again, one third of the food is wasted. 40% of the food waste happens at home and freezing or frozen can half it. Now you might say this is a pretty impressive opportunity to fight food waste. Well, at the FAO level, um, so you know, as global as it gets, they have 78 researchers' documents published, and out of the 78, in something which is called Food Waste Policy Manual, so it's very specific on food waste, out of the 78, there are two chapters in two, res in two research only that mention frozen. That's it. So the opportunity to learn is massive. We have pledged that, you know, as a company, we'll help the European, in, in this case, because that's where we operate, the European community to fund more researchers. You all live in different countries. If you're interested in the subject, if you think the food waste is, is something that is, uh, you know, to be tackled, like I do, you know, think about how and what can you do in your own country to make the understanding of the issue, to do the researchers, to get somebody to fund, maybe your companies or whatever, to fund those researchers in your country to understand how that circular economy about food works so that it can be tackled at the various level. This is where the waste in Europe is. Food service and catering, 14%. So what you left this morning when, we were served, when you were served breakfast in, uh, in your hotel and you left it on the plate, that 14%. Manufacturing, 39%. Household, as I said before, is 42%. And then retail and wholesale, is the remaining, you know, uh, 5%. So it happens around and, and understanding, not just in Europe, which is what we have learned, but, you know, everywhere else, how this works and where to tackle it is really what my call to action is to you today. Um, I've done my call to action to those guys that can make a difference in policy making and in, uh, you know, uh, food and European organizations. Uh, my call to action to you is find out more, learn about it, how does it work? Where is it? And if you feel that it is an immoral issue, if you feel that your mother was after all right when she said, don't leave it on the plate, ask for more research, get the data, and make it happen. Thank you very much. So thank you, Elio.